2022 Mitsubishi Outlander SUV. Mitsubishi's recent lineup of vehicles has not been one of our favorites. The subcompact Mirage is inexpensive but undesirable, and the Outlander Sport SUV is, well, best to just not say anything about that one. Thankfully, there's a lot of good stuff to say about the redesigned 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander. It's a dramatic improvement over its predecessor and could be worth looking at if you're shopping for a small SUV. Mitsubishi upgraded the new Outlander just about everywhere. The steering gives you a better feel for the road, the handling is more secure, and the interior is quieter and more comfortable. Interestingly, this new Outlander is based on the also new for minus 2021 Nissan Rogue. The two SUVs have the same engines and share other mechanical features. But Mitsubishi definitely puts its own spin on the vehicle, with Land Rover-inspired styling and a third-row seat. That third row is tiny, so something like a Honda Pilot would be a better choice if you really need an SUV with three rows of seating. Still, only a few small SUVs offer a third row, and it can come in handy in pinch. Key rivals to the Outlander include the related Rogue, the Honda CR-V, Kia Sorento and Volkswagen Tiguan. This Outlander is massively better than its immediate predecessor. Sharing a platform with the new for minus 2021 Nissan Rogue, the Outlander benefits from the collaboration with an impressive touchscreen interface, upgraded interior materials, and improved ride and seat comfort compared to the old Outlander. An uninspiring powertrain and a few noted tech gremlins are among the few downsides. The Outlander's low point is its powertrain. The 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine has decent power specs, but it's rather gutless in real-world driving. At the Edmunds test track, our all-wheel drive test Outlander accelerated from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 9.7 seconds. That's pretty slow, and you'll notice it when trying to make a pass on the highway. A Honda CR-V, for comparison, covers 0 to 60 miles per hour in 8.2 seconds. Otherwise, the Outlander is mild-mannered. The steering wheel has a decent amount of heft to it, and the body stays fairly composed when taking mountain curves at speed. It's not a sporty choice like the Mazda CX-5, but the Outlander will go around a corner without making your passengers queasy. The Outlander rides comfortably over a variety of road surfaces. The front seats are also nicely padded and can keep passengers comfy even on long road trips. We also like that the Outlander is one of the few vehicles in this class with available climate controls for rear passengers. The heated seats get quite toasty in the highest setting. Wind and road noise is unobtrusive, but you'll definitely notice the engine noise when you accelerate, which can be quite often, depending on your driving style or level of road incline. The Outlander's interior is similar to the Nissan Rogue's. The driver's seat offers a good range of adjustment so tall and short pilots alike should be able to find an ideal position. Oddly, the front passenger seat adjusts only fore and aft and in the seatback angle. Getting in and out of the front seat is a cinch, but adults might have trouble entering the rear. The bench seat is mounted somewhat high, so you'll probably have to scrunch to avoid hitting your head on the way in. While the front and second rows are fairly spacious, the third row has only a minimal amount of legroom. It's effectively useless for anyone taller than a child. The touchscreen interface is bright and has easy-to-learn menus. The Outlander's available integrated navigation system works pretty well, though its ability to search for points of interest isn't so great. The Bose Premium Audio System sounds pretty good and produces little distortion at higher volumes. Most Outlander trims come with wireless connectivity for Apple CarPlay. That's great from a value perspective but we'll note we had frequent glitches when trying to connect an iPhone during our testing. We're also not enamored with the infotainment system voice controls. They require following a rigid command structure and, in our testing, often failed to understand our commands. The Outlander comes with a comprehensive suite of advanced driving aids. However, we found the operation of the traffic adaptive cruise control and lane centering features to be poor. For example, the cruise control seemed very slow to slow the Outlander down on the highway, and our drivers worried that it might not work quick enough to avoid a collision with the vehicle ahead. There's not much room behind the third row, so long road trips are definitely out of the picture for a family of six. Storage behind the second row is generous at 33.5 cubic feet. There's also plenty of space with the second and third rows folded. One of our drivers fit 20-plus bags of mulch this way. The Outlander also has plenty of spots to stash your gear. 
You can use the small tray under the center stack if you aren't charging your phone, and the underarm bin is nicely sized. The rear door pockets are rather small, and so are the cup holders. Accessing the rear cup holders requires folding down the entire middle seat, so hopefully your cargo is totally secured. If you need to fit child seats, watch your fingers while attaching the tethers. They are hidden behind narrow slits behind the seat and are surrounded by sharpish plastic. The all-wheel drive Outlander gets an EPA estimated 26 mpg combined, 24 city, 30 highway. We found these results to be achievable in real-world driving, though an observed 26.7 mpg average on our standardized test route was a little lower than we expected. Three-row competitors are a few mpg in arrears in all categories, though two-row SUVs are generally more efficient. You do pay for the Outlander's lower fuel consumption with lethargic acceleration. Rivals are more well-balanced. The Outlander's value depends entirely on whether you really need its third row. It might be useful on rare occasions, but it's not suitable for adults even on short trips. Almost every other two-row SUV is less expensive than the Outlander. If you do need the third row, the Mitsubishi Outlander costs roughly the same as the Volkswagen Tiguan. The Outlander is less expensive than the Kia Sorento, but the Sorento is preferable for several reasons, including a roomier third row. If you just want a decent car with great features at an affordable price, the Outlander will meet your expectations. Also noteworthy are the Outlander's upscale interior materials. Mitsubishi's warranty plan is quite generous. Every Outlander comes with a 5-year, 60,000-mile basic warranty, 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty and 5 years, unlimited miles of roadside assistance. Outlander and fun used to be mutually exclusive. Now the words are just strange bedfellows. Acceleration is tepid, and much of the driving experience is boring, but the Outlander no longer stumbles or flops when confronted with a set of narrow turns. Its quick steering is also something of a surprise, helping the Outlander feel, dare we say, agile? The SUV further stands out with a comfortable ride and pleasant interior. The Outlander benefits greatly from its new Nissan Rogue underpinnings. With a tidy interior, button-down ride and impressive materials in its range-topping form, the Outlander no longer feels like an afterthought from Mitsubishi or an also-ran in the class.